Hello everyone and welcome to another real estate video. This is Javier Vidania, the real estate YouTube guy here in Phoenix, Arizona, helping you accomplish your home goals. So you've been looking for a house now for a while, or maybe you're thinking about looking for a house and you can't help but notice there's a ton of freaking new home builders everywhere. And you're starting to see that the freaking prices, I keep saying freaking, 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 the freaking prices are not that bad. And you keep getting either beat out or you hear people getting demolished in this gladiator battle arena of the resale market that we're currently in. And you don't want to freaking spend 20 or 30,000 more to get a house or you don't want to have to pay your closing costs to get a house. So you're thinking seriously about a new build. Here's my three things that I really consider you should check out before you go walk into that new home development. If this is the first time you're watching, welcome to the channel. I make real estate videos here to help you accomplish your home goals. Um, if you please like and subscribe. I know that's so dumb. I hate to beg for likes, but YouTube seems to like it. So I really appreciate if you do that. And if, if you happen to like the video at the very end, hit subscribe and watch more. Anyways, let's get to it. Number one. Here's the thing about new builds, okay? Um, they are very nice and shiny, and as you walk through the model home, you're like, ooh, this is nice granite, ooh, this is that. And they usually, before you walk in, they get you with a big old billboard that says, home starting at X, like a really cheap amount. And that makes you go in there and get all excited. Well, here's the thing. Before you walk in there, I still suggest you have a general education of how to buy a house. How do you do this? Well, I guess you could get educated off a random guy on YouTube that says freaking too much, or you can already be working with someone. The, my most successful new builds uh, experiences with my clients happen when I'm working with a client in the resale market. We get beat up a few times and we go, you know what, let's go new build. They get to experience you, but they enjoy what they're getting into. They're like, oh my God, this is so different. This is so nice. They wait their time and they leave with a very happy experience. Well, that's because they experienced the terrible, they went with the good, and they enjoy it more. They can see the value in what they're going in. And so I would still start like you're gonna buy a resale. Contact your lender, contact a realtor, have them hopefully they take you to the office or they do a Zoom call where they educate you on the buying process. They educate you on the market. Maybe go look at a few resales. Start experiencing that and feeling that, those vibes, right? Before you go to a new build. It helps you understand what you're gonna be pre-qualified for, what's gonna be the experience of buying your resale, and more importantly, it's gonna make you either appreciate or not really appreciate the new build experience a little more. Now, if you're happy to work with this realtor and you want to, you know, you like the person and you want them to help you with the new build purchase, you definitely can. Oh, by the way, that pre-qualification that you did with your realtor, guess what? When you go talk to the, the, the new home developers or whatever, they're always going to sprinkle in like, hey, if you go with our lender, we're going to give you an incentive or hey, we're going to pay your closing costs for you. And guess what? That's pretty freaking sweet. Listen, I love my built my lender to death. You guys know, you know Lizzie, Lizzie gang represent. So you know us lizards know we love Lizzie. But if the new builders offering to pay six, seven thousand dollars worth of closing costs and giving you five or ten thousand of incentive that can help you contribute towards a nicer uh, kitchen or nicer flooring or nicer paint, it's hard to pass by. They're making their money somehow, either on the back end because they own the lending company or maybe they they inflated the prices a bit, but most of the time they get their way and we go with the lender because they just offer such great incentives. My second thing is if you haven't worked with the realtor yet, you didn't follow my, my, my advice on the first tip and now you're just going to the second tip and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the new build. I'm just, whatever. I'm not even going to try it out. I'm not going to have a realtor or whatever. New builders are already going to make their money. Duh. Um, what I mean is they're already accounted for paying a commission for the agent that's bringing in the buyer and making their money or paying their salesperson or whatever. So there's already a percentage that, that they've put aside and they probably put into the house because they know people come with realtors sometimes. So if you're going to go this route and go lone wolf and not have a realtor there, here's what I recommend you do. Okay. There, if there is a particular new build uh, situation you like or a certain home in an area that works, before you go walk in there, give them a call. You'd be like, hey, my name is John, my name is Joan, my name is Sally, whatever your name is. I'm thinking about buying a home in your community. If I have a realtor with, sorry, if I don't have a realtor with me, are you going to give me a better deal? It's gonna be yes or no. These salespeople don't care if you have a realtor or not. Honestly, they don't. Everyone I've worked with, they seem to be like whatever, but there are some states and cities out there that are very vicious. And they might say, oh yeah, I'm gonna get you a better deal. Or, oh yeah, no, don't, don't 
settle for that. Be like, how much you're gonna save? Do I save off the price? Are the, is the two to three percent you were gonna pay that realtor then going to the, does the deduction on the price, or are you basically making that? So if they tell you that no, we're not gonna give you any kind of discount going to a realtor, then stop. Why don't you just call a realtor that you like and just have them go with you? I have a lot of people in the channel that just like me and they just say, Javier, I already know I'm gonna go buy this new build. I just want you there with me. So I'll be like, all right, let's go and I'll go with them. People always hate when I say this, but it's the God honest truth. Um, realtors always like to over inflate their, their self worth and be like, yes, I, I did this and that and this and that. But the reality is with new builds, there's not much to do. We can be there to, to kind of go with the, 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 the new builds and you can pick your upgrades and I can be like, hold on, Sally, don't get that upgrade. No, I'm not going to do that. You're going to choose your upgrades and do what you want. And when it comes to negotiating, well, if you're in a crazy market, sometimes there's not much to negotiate. If you're not going to give the price that the new builder wants, they have five or 10 other people that are going to sell the, these lots right away, right? Usually what, what these builders do is they release three to five lots at a time and they'll sell out quick because they know they can sell out the whole lots right away. So if you're in that market, then they're not really negotiating off the price. They're kind of just there to oversee the paperwork and make sure there's no funny business, just to make sure that someone's on your side and they don't try to pull anything, right? But other than that, we're kind of just there for the ride. If you have someone you like and you're someone that you want to work with, why not have them go with you if it's not going to cost you anything? Now, if it's the other direction where they say, yes, you, if you come in without a realtor, we'll take off 10,000 off the price or 5,000 off the price. Then my friend, you have a very difficult decision to make. Are you gonna go in there? If you're experienced already and bought a house, maybe you don't need someone, just go in there and get it done. If you're not experienced, you need to say, well, is that five or $10,000 deduction gonna be worth the hassle of having not someone have my back? Your choice. And the last thing I'm gonna say about new builds that you should know is the price that's being marketed is not gonna be any close to your final price. Now, yes, there is very few exceptions of people that go into new builds and they start at their base price and they stay near that base price. They don't add any upgrades and they get a very, very basic new build. It's brand new, but it's very, very basic. There are people out there that does that. But here's the thing. If you're going to go new build, why not add nice things in there? Why not? You know, if you want the nicer flooring, just get it done. Or if you want the nicer can it, get it done. Now, granted, they're probably overcharging you for that service. You could probably do the granite yourself and it's cheaper. Or you could probably do the, I don't know, freaking fans yourself, or you can do the, the the extra wall that they're charging you four grand for, the patio yourself. You can do all this by yourself. But if you have the builder do it, there should be some kind of warranty attached to it. So if anything happens with that granite or something happens with that patio, there should be a warranty behind it. So it's protecting yourself a little further. And secondly, and the most important thing is time. Like your time is more, much more valuable than you think. Your time and energy, you're not gonna get that back. And having to work with these upgrades or these um, these projects after you move in, especially to a brand new house where you have to tear something that's brand new is gonna be draining. The price that you usually see that's being marketed is not always that gonna price. First and foremost, it's very rare when you see that price there that you're actually gonna like that model. The cheapest model they have is always like, always a little wonky for some reason. There, there's always something weird about it. There's a their rooms are small or, or the freaking kitchens like next to the master. I don't know. There's always weird things that with the very cheap price house. So you're going to go in and then you're not going to like the, the cheapest model. So what they're always going to have on display is the mid tier model, the nicer one and the really, really big one. They're always going to have like a different variation of them. And what you're going to notice is there's going to be the super cheap model and there's going to be a huge price gap and there's going to be a bunch of them scattered up here. Um, maybe there's one in the middle sometimes, but usually that's what happens. That's because they usually like, like to, they make the cheap model to kind of get your attention. And then really the purpose is, and what most people do is they settle for a higher model that has better and more modern features. So, so the first thing is you're going to have to watch out for the, the different models or you're, you're probably going to end up loving something a little different. Now, the second thing is you think that the only upgrades are going to be like, oh, yes, I the blue wall or the white wall, or the granite or the kitchen cabinets. And we're going to make sure not to pick the nicest things. But you're really you, people get surprised when they find out there's much more upgrades to it than just that. Literally, some neighborhoods will have a mandatory uh, pre lot premium for every single lot in the spot. 
or if you want something with a little like extra room in the backyard so you can fart can travel easier or I don't know why you want a little extra room that might be an extra three five ten K on top of the pre the value and on top of that you're gonna see different variations or elevations as they call it and maybe the ugly elevation is gonna be the first one but if you want the nicer more modern one it's gonna be an extra three or five thousand or guess what you like that patio or you like that little wall next to the kitchen or you like that you like the fact that you have pavers on as, as the walkway or the or the driveway all these things add up so there's two main upgrades you need to worry about not only the cosmetic but the structural and the location based one mm -hmm. and yes you're going to be buying overvalued for sure and of course the appraisal there's no there's never no issues with the appraisal with new builds because the appraisals always come in where they need them that's kind of weird huh but um you're going to be buying in a really nice neighborhood that's going to be a little bit overinflated and you're going to hope that the market kind of catches up to it or if you're lucky, you might buy something that the market already caught up to. I have a few people that went into a new build in February and they just closed recently and they're like way above equity now because everything's so much more expensive in the area. So just prepare your wallet. Be ready. Know that that value that you see being marketed, if first and foremost, that's just the cheapest model. If you don't even, let's say you end up selling for the cheapest model, well, it might go up 20 to 40,000 as I would say is average. But I would even say it's gonna be higher because most people don't settle for the cheapest model. They always go for the one that's just a little more expensive that has a little nicer features. And that's it. That's the three things to wash out for when uh, going to a new build. So hopefully this helps you understand what to expect or what to prepare for before you go walk into that new build office. Thank you so much for watching for your time. I, watching for your time. I, Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. If this is the first time you're watching, I appreciate your feedback and comments below. Let me know what your experience has been or if you've gone through the process, what it was like. And if you're in Phoenix, Arizona and you're looking for a realtor to hire, either resell or sell your house or go buy a new build with you and go walk with you, my contact information can be found below. Um, everyone else, you can definitely leave me a comment below or you can you just go to my social media, Instagram or Twitter, uh, follow me, send me a DM and I'll make sure to just try to respond to you as fast as possible. Don't forget to catch me live on the channel about three times a week i go live here so i look forward to seeing you there thank you guys so much for your time i appreciate you have a wonderful day